friends, welcome back to Ecocentric Homestead. Today I am going to make a self-watering planter. My version of the self-watering planter. You've probably seen the uh, double cup method when using these solo cups. They put a stone in the bottom of the one cup and then put your second cup in. Well, my self-watering planter going to be a double five gallon bucket. This one is full of holes because it was used for a planter before. What I'm going to do at first, I'll take my ruler and I want to make two parallel lines with my marker here, four inches apart. This is a wicking mat, a capillary mat. You buy them uh, 36 inches wide by 72 inches long. They set these type of things on it. And this end is hanging in water. And it'll wick the water up along that total 72 inches on the flat. I don't know the vertical amount is quite a bit and it'll wick it up vertically and then soak the old horizontal level portion of the capillary mat. I need to make these lines as long as this is wide. So that's five and a half inches on that end. And when it comes over the other end, we're going to have it about uh, 5 inches. Might as well make them both 5 and a half, eh? Now, I cut this short, this piece, just so that I can place it there. It really doesn't matter where you put this next part. But I'm thinking over here will be better because I'm going to have this fabric coming out slots here and it can flip over and be underneath the uh, hole that I'm going to make. And there's a reason why I don't want that. You see, I'm going around the inside of this piece of pipe because it's the inside diameter I want. That's why I cut that off short like that. I'm going to use my wood burning tool and melt these slots. A grinder would probably be fastest, but uh, I don't like the noise, so I avoid using noisy things whenever I can. This takes a long time, and I'll speed it up in the uh, editing. Forcing on it, you uh, can make yourself slip. You just have to let it burn its way through. Now to burn out this hole. With a hole, I guess you could use a jigsaw. That bag up there. And so here we have our slots in their hole. I didn't take 
show you this before because I wanted to get that hole made so I can actually show you. Because of these ribs on this bucket, the bottom of the inner bucket stays so far from the bottom of the outer bucket, giving you a gap. And if I put the measuring tape down, I've got from the inside surface of the outside bucket to the outside surface of the inside bucket, it's three inches. Now our next task, I'm going to put this through. I'm going to put a corner through there, pull it out from the other side. And make both sides about even. <clears throat> now when these pieces here, if they're touching water, then they'll whip that water up and this inside square here will remain soaked as long as those outside ones are touching water. Next task, let's see how well I can do that. I have this piece of pipe it goes there, it's a little higher than the bucket. It, I could have cut it off and level with the surface of the bucket if I wanted. So I put the pipe right over that hole and I take my glue gun. Because the bucket is slanted the side, there is a gap there now between the uh, bottom of the bucket and the pipe on the outside. And I'm going to fill in that gap in near the wall now. I can't get it right in behind so I'll just put a big glob there. Like this. And up on top now, I will put some in between the pipe and the wall of the bucket. So in the end, you can see right down to the bottom, but the pipe is not coming out the bottom. So I can just still lay this flat on any surface and outside I add a spot that's wet all the time. I can bring this bucket out, lay it in that wet spot, and uh, it'll wick water up if I want to have my plant outside. When it's inside, of course. They ain't down quite far, so they'll be down to the bottom of the bucket. And I put them together like this. I've got three inches down there. To fill up with water. This is what I was using last year for my tomatoes and I wanted to change the style. I just wasn't happy with that. So what I'm going to do now Bring that over near the hand there.
and I'm going to put a screw in each one. A couple of them I glued up top so they won't turn for me. I have to put them there. Now I have some pretty moistened soil here and I uh, choose one of these tomato plants. Which one should I do? I want to do this Scotia one. I got mostly cherry heirloom. The beefsteak one didn't seem to come. I may have to plant some more uh, tomato seeds. First thing I want to do is clip off the lower branches on these because when you plant tomato seeds, tomato plants, you can plant them nice and deep and then they'll send the roots along the stem. So I'm going to plant him down to just below this stem here. So if I set that in there, that's uh, about three inches of soil I need to put in there first. There, that's enough. Nice root structure on this. It's not root bound. Now I'll just set them in the center. Hold them up and drop soil around them. I didn't put a uh, overflow hole in this outside bucket because one, I'm going to be keeping these in the sunroom so they won't be getting rained on to get the outside bucket full and drown out my plant. I can be careful about how much water I put in to make sure I don't get root rot. Without having the outside bucket modified in any way, then the outside bucket can be used for something else. I can take this inner bucket out if I want and use this one and then replace it afterwards. 
the reason I did this is because for most designs you see for self-watering planters, they have a reservoir in the bottom of the bucket or bed or whatever, and it's completely sealed from the outside. You can't get at it, and if something, like if you have algae grow in it or soil is getting in it that you didn't notice, etc., then you have dirt in your reservoir that you might want to clean out. So this way I can take out the inner bucket every so often, even if it's just once a year, and make sure there is nothing down in my reservoir. On top of dirt getting down there, of course, you've got your pipe that miss spiders and bugs, or for that matter, or that even a shrew or a vole can get down there. This is a two gallon watering container. And I'll just fill up my reservoir now. You can measure it with a stick, or when you uh, are doing this, you will notice a change in the sound of the water there when the water gets up to the bottom of the inner bucket. You notice it started to change pitch. I'll take this stick now and I'll put that down there. The water's up to there. Which is just under three inches. It takes about a gallon and a half, I can add a little bit more water. I just listen to the pitch, it's going to be a higher pitch than what it was when I started out. You hear that? That's another option for making your self-watering planters. Now when I go away, first two weeks of August, I'm going to have all my tomatoes in these and I can get two gallon buckets to put my pepper plants in. The cost of this, I can buy five gallon buckets for four dollars a piece. We've got two five gallon buckets, that's eight dollars. These pipe, they come in six foot lengths so uh, by the time I buy the pipe and I cut them up, each piece will cost about two dollars. So that's ten dollars. The wicking material that I put in the bottom, you have to buy it by the sheet. You buy a capillary mat, as I said earlier, 36 inches by 72 inches. By the time I get that shipped and taxed and all, it comes to about $46 for me. If you are close to a place where you can go pick it up, then you don't pay shipping of course. For me, I can make 46 pieces out of a one mat. So I'm talking $1 for each piece. So we got 4, 8, 10, 11 if you add tax so you're up to about $13 for the planter portion and then if you need something for a trellis then whatever the trellis material is going to cost you which this is just spruce so it didn't cost very much and uh, the couple of screws that I put in there there's a bit of glue which costs almost nothing and yeah so, for a planter, about $13 and then your trellis. I hope you found that interesting. And that is another idea for you when you're wanting to make self-watering planters. Give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video.
If you'd like to see more DIY and self-reliance homesteading videos, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and the bell to be notified of future videos. I'll see you in the next video.